again. And I was just thinking about our future. I was thinking about what God has in store for this church. And this passage of scripture came to me a few weeks ago. I've studied this passage of scripture before. This is a great study on when Jesus meets this woman. He had an appointment by God to meet this woman at the well. And this is just a great passage of scripture. And I'm so excited to be speaking about this. And as I was putting this together, God just kept giving me one thing after another. And I'm, I'm, I'm so thankful for it. So if you don't mind, let's take the time and let me just pray for God to anoint every word that I have to say today. And I pray that you will experience what I've experienced putting, to get, putting it together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for once again being here. I'm not going to pray long. I just want to say, Lord, I need you. I need you like I've never needed you before. I want your holy anointing, anointing in my life right now as I speak. And I speak in the most precious and powerful name of all. Jesus' name. Amen. I want to talk to you about what we have here. I think the hardest part about preaching is certain things that we understand at a conceptual level, but we really don't understand on a practical level. And our spirituality can often be abstract that it really doesn't make a difference in our day to day lives. And that would make me feel like a failure if I, all I did was make you feel good for about 35 minutes while you were here. So it's, it's my job to give you something that will strengthen you. It's my job to give you something that you can take seriously. But it's a challenge because if you take a verse like what we just read this morning, and we read two verses, but verse 35 is the one that I'm thinking about. Jesus is quoting a proverb, and it's a farming proverb, a Middle Eastern proverb, and let's be real, it's ancient, okay? It's not something we walk around saying all the time. All right, like yesterday, we were up at Dark Town, and I went into the store to, to get some things. I don't walk into that store and say, hey, Harvest time is here. That's not the kind of language we use today. So when we preach, it makes it hard for us to take what is in this Bible and translate it to you so you can understand what you need to understand. And and I, I look at this, we you know, Jesus says here, look at look what Jesus says, and I think. This is what we need to focus on, on this morning. He said, you have a saying. There are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Now, I've learned a lot of things about farming through people that I know farm, but I'm not a farmer myself. Any farmers in the house? Any farmers? Keep your hands up. Your farmers, you grew up on a farm? I mean, literally grew up on a farm. All right. All right, look at that. All right, we have some, but the majority of people that are in this room have never farmed. So, as I said, this is a farming proverb that Jesus uses here that they would understand back in this time, but it's hard for us to understand. So, we don't have that saying, so this creates a problem when you're preaching to people in this time and age. And I'm trying to take a saying that Jesus said that we never say. Most of us don't walk around saying that. Maybe you do. Four months till harvest, you know. Um, but it's not exactly a part of our modern vernacular, right? It's, it's doubly hard because this is a agricultural culture. And we, well, most of us don't have a familiarity with farming. And uh, so, see, not that many of when you look at this, this is an agricultural culture example in what we live today, a app store world. So this is very hard to get across 
to people that need to understand what Jesus is trying to say here. And that's why context is so important. Context is how you have compassion for someone. You can talk about what they ought to do, but you're not them, okay? And if you were them, you might not be doing as good as they are doing in that situation. Take, for instance, preaching. It's not easy for people to get up here and preach. It's not easy for people to stand in front of other people and bring the Word of God. I truly believe that preaching is a calling from God. And I believe that it's an anointing that comes over your life that allows you to speak in, in the way that I'm speaking now to you because it's not easy. Like if I walk down here right now and handed Ray this microphone, Ray, I want you to get up here and preach my message. Okay. Well, he would, all right. <laughs> We're not that far in our relationship to be able to get here. Wrong choice on that one. He was willing to do it, all right? But preaching is a very tough situation because we have to take the Word of God the way it is because this is God's Word. This is the truth. This is God speaking to you and I. And that's why it's serious business because this is what we go by. This is our daily bread. This is our life. And as I said in Sunday school this morning, I don't know how people get through life without God. And I really don't know how they do it without reading the Word of God. Because there are things in my life, and I know there's things in your life that you're wondering, wow, what am I going to do? Well, that's when I really get into God's Word. Because that's when God starts to speak to me. And He directs me through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And it's a wonderful thing that takes place. But I know a lot of people, have you ever been in a situation where you're texting somebody and they text you back? Now some of you are praising there, I don't text. That's okay. Maybe you're texting somebody and they text you back and it was kind of short. They didn't mean it that way, but it was kind of short. Have you ever been in that situation? And you think, how dare you? Answer my question. You know, or you text somebody and they put K instead of OK. You ever done that? And it's like, you can't take the little time to say OK. Now, some of you are saying, when I text you and I put K, he gets upset about that. No, what I'm saying is, we read into things that we shouldn't read into. And sometimes when that happens, we get upset and we get angry and we think, you know, well, why were they short with me? Are they mad at me? You don't realize maybe they're having the worst day of their life. Maybe they've been in the hospital or someone that they love has been in the hospital. And they're really, it's not that they're mad at you. It's just they have other things going on in their life. But we get mad about that and we get all upset. And we think to ourselves, well, the context is... We, we're not knowing all the context of that conversation, not knowing that they're having a bad day. Everybody in this room has bad days, right? Some of us have bad hair days. But we have bad days. And a lot of times we read into something without looking at the whole context of it. And we get ourselves all upset. And when I look at this, I think about this, this story that's in front of us. And I think about context. You know, we always talk about being of one mind and, and uh, one likeness and harmony and, and all of that. But, you know, a lot of times we get to that point where we, we want to judge one another. We want to make accusations against one another. We want to we wanna say this person's this and when they're not really that, we're not walking in their shoes. We're not living their life. We don't understand the full context of it. And that happens in churches as well. Another thing is too, I was talking to uh, a gentleman about uh, uh, the problems that we're having in the church. And when I say problems, I'm talking about the way we look at it. 
The problems is, all right, we're filling the sanctuary up, which means our parking lot is full. And the context, you know, the, the thing of a growing church is great. Amen. The concept of a growing church is great. The context of a growing church is trying to find a parking spot when it's raining. See what I'm saying? And, and all of this stuff is, is going on. And, and one gentleman looked at me and said, hey, that's the blessings of a growing church. It's not a problem. It's a blessing of a growing church. So when we look at all of this, you know, I've been in this line of work for a little while now. I've been preaching since 1987. I've had a calling on my life since I was 19. So that's a year ago. No, actually, it's 34 years ago. Someone asked me the other night, how long have you been preaching? I told them, 34 years. And I've traveled around, and I've preached, and I've sung, and I've praised the Lord for it. And sometimes when, when you preach, it doesn't go so well. You know, it doesn't go well, and sometimes it does. Sometimes audiences are hard to preach to. Sometimes they're hard to sing to. Some people sit in the back and as you're preaching, they have their arms crossed and they say, bless me, big boy. <laughs> if you can. That's the kind of stuff that you have to deal with. All right? Some of you sleep. Because you don't get any sleep at home, so you sleep during service. And then you walk out the door and tell me it's the best sermon I ever preached. <laughs> that makes me feel really good. I'm just joking. But there are things that we have to understand as we go through this life. And one of the things that's hard for me to understand sometimes is the way that it's mentioned in the Bible and as a preacher taking that and making it into something that you can understand in our world. Take for instance the word harvest. Now the word harvest to me, Jeff, it, because I'm not a farmer, but I've looked into it and things like that. The things I would get out of that word harvest is it's party time. It's, it's time to, you know, it's time to relax and, and get everything and everything else. But that's not really what harvest means. How many of you are farmers or been farmers? Can anybody tell me what harvest really means? <laughs> it, it means time to go to work. Yeah. One person told me, you know, I, I, I was always think, you know, harvest is, okay, sleeping in now and all of that. No, harvest is that corn out there ain't going to pick itself. Right? It's not going to pick itself. So when Jesus looks at them here, now this is a story of Jesus and the Samaritan woman. And I want you to notice something that is so important. My Bible tells me that Jesus must needs to go to Samaria, which means he didn't do what everybody else would always do. You see, the Jews hated the Samaritans because they were half-breeds. They were half-breeds, and the Jewish people couldn't stand them. So they would literally, instead of walking through Samaria, they would find a course of walking around Samaria. And see, that's what the disciples do. They're, they're walking with, with Jesus, and Jesus says, Hey, you guys go get something to eat. I know you're, I know you're hungry. You guys go get something to eat. And I'm, I must need to go into Samaria. Because this is the way Jesus was thinking. Harvest time is ready. And it's time to work. It's time to get busy. It's time to reap what you have sown. And that's the, uh, the thought that was on Jesus' heart. And I think about this church. I think about when this church was looking at me to become the pastor. And I came to the anniversary uh, Sunday. And I, and I listened to a message or a, a conversation that was played over the speakers. And, the, and, and here was what I got out of that. All of that, I got this out. It's time to work. 
We've had the mindset to work. Okay? So I look around, I walk around, and I am thankful. Aren't you thankful for the facilities that we have here at this church? Aren't you thankful for it? Let's give God a good old, big old hand because God has blessed this church. And folks, I am proud of what we have here. I go down to Lowe's or I go down to anywhere around here and I look up on the hill and you can see this church. And I've had many great conversations because of that. And I'm, I'm thankful for this. But listen to me. This didn't just happen. Amen? This didn't just happen. It took work. I've heard many of you talking about how you would stay over here at night and guard this place as it was being built. That takes work. And Jesus said to the disciples, you have a saying. In four months, it's going to be harvest. And what Jesus was saying there was this. It's time to reap what we're going to sow. And Jesus had in his mind this Samaritan woman. And I won't go into all of this because this, this story itself, I could spend three or four weeks on. Because there's so much meat into this. But I will give you the gist of this story. This woman comes to the well that day, on that day, because Jesus said, I must needs go into Samaria. And he sets himself at that well because he knew that this woman was coming. And on his mind, that woman was more important to him to reach than going somewhere to eat. But see, the disciples had a whole different mindset and they were like, hey, okay, no problem. We're gonna go down to Texas Roadhouse and we're gonna enjoy our rolls and we're gonna enjoy our peanuts and we're gonna enjoy our steak. Jesus, you go do what you wanna do. We're gonna go do what we wanna do. And the story is they go off and they're, they, they went to go eat because that was one of their mindset. But Jesus said, I must need to go into Samaria. And he's sitting there, he's waiting for this woman to come. This woman arrives. And they start carrying on a conversation. And in this conversation, Jesus starts to explain to her her life. He starts to tell her things that were happening in her life. She stands there amazed that he would know all of what was going on. And the one conversation that really gets me is when she said, I have no husband. And he said, I know you don't. But you've had five. And now you're living with somebody. And she was like, how did you know this? Now here's the, here's the thing. You had five husbands. That's not a mistake. There's a problem there. And she's had this problem that's going on. She's had this problem that's going on. There's something that was that was hurting inside. Nothing else could satisfy what was empty inside. And in this conversation, she says, "I need." You know, he he said, "I was thirsty," and, and she said, I, "I have no cup to dip out." And here's the thing that you got to remember. Jesus wasn't worried about a cup to get the water. He was the living water. Amen? He was the living water. And she was the cup. She was the cup. Look at that person next to you again and say, I'm a cup. Because that's what we are. We're the cup. And Jesus is the living water. And in this conversation, he begins to talk to her. And he begins to give her things and say things to her that she realizes, you know what? I do have a problem. And, and I need to fix this problem. And you're the one that can fix the problem for me. Now she goes off back to her town. And Jesus knew that she would do that. In the meantime, here come these disciples with toothpicks in their mouth. They've had a great meal at Texas Roadhouse. And they brought Texas Roadhouse to Jesus. They brought him a steak and baked potato and everything. They, they set it down. They said, Jesus, here. Now you eat. And Jesus says to him, look what, look what he says to him. He says, hey, I'm not here to eat. This isn't what I'm here for. What I'm here for is this lady. 
And I've talked to her and she just went back and he's like, wait, have you ever been in that? Wait, just wait. Wait more, five more seconds. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, she went back to her town. She was sharing. There's the seed that was planted. The seed that was planted, she went back in her town and she began to tell others about this man that she met at the well. He was different than anybody else. And you know, they're probably thinking in their mind, oh, you met another man. <laughs> Am I right? That's probably what they're thinking. But what a testimony, amen? amen? If God can reach somebody like that, don't you think he can reach you? And what I love about that is that she said, you have to come and meet him. And Jesus is sitting there saying, hey, I don't have time to eat. I've got other things on my mind. And they look over, ladies and gentlemen, they look over, and here comes the harvest. And Jesus is saying, hey, you have a saying four months until harvest. Listen to me. You can wait four months to harvest, but that's not what we need to be waiting for. We need to get ready and we need to be working now because look what's coming. It wasn't her alone that came back to that well, but she brought the community back with her. You see, that's the harvest. And Jesus said, boys, let's get busy. It's time to work. Now, all of these barriers that was up between the deep, the disciples and, and Jesus was, you know, all of this Samaria stuff. You know, a man couldn't talk to a woman publicly and all of these different uh, laws and rules that they had and all of that. And Jesus said, you know what? Forget those barriers. The barriers are coming off. This is our harvest and the harvest is now. You say four months. I say it's now. And we need to get busy. Yesterday, some people ask, they ask all the time, why do you do the things that you do outside of church? Listen, the concept that we have in this church is we are a church on a hill with Hamilton on our heart. That's a concept. We are a church on a hill with Hamilton on our heart. Here's the context. What are we doing to make Hamilton part of our heart? What are we doing as a church? Yesterday, a lot of people came out. It was wonderful. It was wonderful. People that are here today that were part of the Dartown Church, you know exactly who I'm talking about. There's an older couple that lived across the street. There's another couple that lived next to them. And they always came out. They always watched what we were doing. They always listened to the music. They always, but they never came over. Yesterday, ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. We have been reaping, or we've been sowing for so many years. A couple that lives over here, we've been sowing for so many years. And we've never harvested that sowing. But listen, when we come here to Emmanuel, who has the resources, who has the people, who has the things that we need to get done and all the things that we need to get done. And yesterday, yes, it was tiring. I woke up this morning, I couldn't even walk. I was so tired, my body was just aching. And I went in there and I just grabbed a bottle of uh, uh, ibuprofen and I just started, you know. That's why I'm a little hyper today. No, I didn't do that. I only took two. Plus 10. Um, but the thing is, is I was hurting, but I, you know, I said to myself, today is the day of the Lord. Amen. Today is the day of the Lord. And I look back at it, and though I was tired, though I was sore this morning, it was well worth it. Because yesterday, yesterday, and I told Leslie this last night, because I was so fired up, I said, listen to me, Les, even if we only reached five or six people yesterday, it was well worth it. It was well worth it. But the thing that I want to tell you is that we have planted a seed for years with these couples that lived around the church. And yesterday, yesterday, 
yesterday, the harvest was there. Because the one couple came over and they asked Leslie, what time does it start? Mm. Leslie told them. And they said, do you care if our girls come over? Mm. And they brought, they brought their chairs and they set them down at the end of their driveway. And their girls were there all day playing. The older couple that lives on the corner, they never ever come over. They just like sitting there watching everything. Yesterday, they came over. Amen. I'm telling you folks, the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. <coughs> Jesus said, I must needs go into Samaria. You know what he was saying? This woman's soul is so important right now because I'm going to sow some seed into her and when she goes back to her town that town's going to come back and we're going to reap it's time to get busy listen to me I love what we have here don't take me wrong I love what we have here but there's empty pews there's empty seats and I think the harvest is now. And I think we need to get busy. And I think we need to let people know that Jesus loves them. And we need to let them know, how are we going to do this? Well, that's my job. I've got so many ideas right now that God is just throwing in my head of how we can be actually the context of a church on the hill with him tomorrow. There was two girls yesterday that got there late and they brought their kids and they were so worried that they were going to miss out on something. I was standing out, out toward the front and they come in and they said, because we, we were starting to close up and they were concerned about it and they, they were like, we were actually here wanting to get some school supplies for our kids. And I looked at both of them and said, you're fine. There's plenty. Go in there and get your supplies. And folks, they went in there and I saw them come back out. They had bags full and they put them in the car. But it didn't stop there. They took off. And I thought, okay, well, I'm glad they got their supplies. They took off. They went and got their kids and came back. And their kids stayed and played while they're there. And as they were walking out, we were, we were taking things down. As they were walking out, they said, thank you so much for opening this up to us. Folks, that's what it's all about. It's okay. I, I thank God we had a lot of supplies. I thank God for the supplies. I do. But it's more than just bringing in supplies. It's about getting, that's the concept. You have to have context with concept. It's more than that. It's getting out there and seeing their faces and talking to them. And letting them know that our God, Jesus Christ, is something more than they ever, ever think of. And He can change their lives. He can take them from where they are. Folks, our city is infested with drugs. There's drugs everywhere. I, I took the trailer back yesterday over at the mission. And I, I got I to gotta be honest with you. As I was dropping that trailer off, there was these four boys that were watching me. And, and I, I thought for sure, you know, being in that area and stuff, I'm thinking, all right, are they going to come after me or what? You, you get that feeling? You know what I'm saying? I was prejudging them and I shouldn't have. I should have done that, but I was because I was getting a little, okay, what I, you know, am I packing? Yeah, I'm packing. And, am I ready for it? And, you know, those are the kind of things you're going through. And I thought to myself, I shouldn't be doing this. They're around this mission. Of course, it was closed, but they were around that mission and I thought, I thought of this message and I said, there's the harvest. 
And I swung around. I, I told Leslie, I said, stay on the phone. Because I don't know what's going on. Then I got on the phone and I swung around. I forgot to put something on. And that was a God thing. Because I swung back around. And I went and I put that back on. And they were, they were, they were closer. And I pulled the truck around. And I stopped. I said, how are you guys doing? They said, oh, we're, we're doing okay. And I started talking to them. And I told them about, Caleb has a friend who raps and stuff. And we're going to try to bring him back in and get out into the city a little bit more. And do some evangelistic type of things. I told them about it. I, I introduced who I was. I told them about it. And they all looked at me and they said, that would be awesome. That would be so good. And we had a normal conversation. And I invited them to come over to the mission. I said, come over there. They're doing some great things. And they said that they would. But see what I'm saying? They're all around us. They're all around us. Listen to me. Jesus said, you have a saying. Harvest is in four months. I'm saying today, the harvest is the time to work. The corn ain't going to pick itself. The harvest is now. The harvest is now. This church has been planting for many years. The harvest is now. Would you be a part of that? Would you be a part of that? And I'm not just talking about bringing in supplies. I'm talking about the things that God is putting in my mind that we can do. I pray, I pray, you start praying right now that you'll be a part of it. And that we'll reach people.